threesome that is the Pro Wrestling Review. I'm Renny Vitor from the Trading Review. I'm Brian Krasner from the Daily News. I'm from the Bowery. My name is Tom yeah. and Betty. Where is the Bowery? Is it a, a state of mind or is it in New York City? It's in somewhere? someone's basement. I thought it was Cleveland. I don't it know. Could, well, no, Possibly. that's other he, things. Raven used to be introduced as the Bowery from Cleveland. your mind or something. Cleveland. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> this is kind of irrelevant. Well, we'd well, like to take this time to introduce our fourth host. He's over there with a the microphone. He's not going to have much to say because he's got a hand up his back. But <laughs> the same can be said for Jim, though. Well, uh, we'll, we'll get into that geez. a little bit later. The I'm man's not even here to defend himself. He yes. will be later, that's though, true. so, you know, that's a good thing. But uh, speaking of threesomes, we're going to talk about uh, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, and Hulk Hogan, another famous threesome, the original NWO, if you will, and their possible involvement with the WWF. And speaking of threesomes, there'll be a lot of love between the three of them once they do come into the WWF because they'll be greasing each other's backsides up for pushes up the line. You know what I mean by that. I, I don't mean to be as... It's 10 o'clock. We're going to be a little race here. Well, but last yeah. week wasn't... You can ask him about last week's yeah. races, but... Uh, that was all incidental, I'd like to add. If I offended anyone with my language, not that you people <laughs> haven't heard any of that before anyway. True. It had to be said. Hey. Now, Hall Nash and Hogan are going to be greasing the skids for each other, I think. Maybe not Hogan as much. I don't, you know what? I'm going to take Hogan out of that, because I'm going to speak positively, believe it or not, about him later in this show. That'd be a first. Yes, the world is also going to end after that happens. But notwithstanding their pending return, uh, we also have the Royal Rumble coming up this week. Well, actually, tomorrow night. Yeah, that would be tomorrow night. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Raw and some of the stuff It's all right that you there. forgot. I think most of the country has. Well, that's kind of the point of the show, that uh, we're forgetting about the Royal Rumble. But, again, we'll get more into that as the show goes on. But uh, unless you guys have anything else to say. Well, Raw this past Monday was another stellar full edition of nothing. Of course, the beginning and the end, but we're going to get into that later in the show. And guess who didn't show up? It made me very happy. So we've got to throw these little teasers out for the viewers to come back. Because if we don't have TNA or gratuitous nudity, not until Jim gets here. Anyway. Yeah, Jim will be here shortly. Yeah. They're going to turn on Carter Rama and try to bid on that uh, Hank Aaron 8.5 mint. Okay, we're, we're being told to w wind yeah. up here. Jim called me the other day and said something about wearing jams and no shirt. <laughs> we'll, we'll get more into that. Uh, Jim we're still exi uh, Anyway, maybe some skids. Um, we're going to come back and we're going to talk more about Raw and the Royal Rumble, so please come back. So talking a little bit about Raw and intermixing it with the uh, Royal Rumble hype since the WWF decided not to have any. <laughs> um, and I guess we should start with the uh, main event match, uh, The Rock versus Chris Jericho for the WWF Championship, or should I say Unified Titles. Yeah. Um, and as Tom mentioned in our little teaser segment, the Scorpion yeah. King was nowhere to be found this past Monday, and apparently he was refilming or trying to fix his uh, ill-fated movie. Is that confirmed? I don't know. I, that's well, I assumed that's as much. That's been the you know, general report. I, I realize that actors sometimes have to reshoot scenes of the movie, but from what I've read, that he has to reshoot these scenes to save the movie. Why bother shooting it in the first place if he's no good? <laughs> I mean, didn't the producer realize that? Or, oh my God, it's The Rock. He's big. He's dark. Let's give him a movie role. <laughs> I think we'll leave that up to uh, Rod serious. Roger Ebert. Thank and God we'll stick to our uh, wrestling part as the mm -hmm. fans out there have told us we don't know anything about movies. Well, change the main event of the Rumble. I realize the t-shirts are made up already with The Rock. I think he has both belts on the shoulder yeah, already. <laughs> I think it says a precursor of things to come below the picture. <laughs> Possibly. Just change the main event. Oh, but it won't sell. Hey, your Rumble's not going to sell anyway. If the return of Kurt Henning and Goldust aren't enough to generate more <laughs> buys, you're not going to sell your Rumble with The Rock in the main event. So, uh, put the, like the clown test. In all, seri longer. in all seriousness, oh, seriousness um, one thing I did mention on the Raw report that I posted on the website was the fact that if The Rock can't be bothered to show up <coughs> to hype this match, then he shouldn't be in the main event, period. Yeah. Well, one thing I mentioned, too, in my portion of the webpage was if The Rock can't be bothered to show up for Raw, why should the fans bother to show up for the pay-per-view? If the main yeah. event, and let's face it, even though Flair McMahon's gotten all the hype, this is the main event, if the main event isn't big enough for The Rock to show up on the Raw before the pay-per-view, then why should the fans show up for the world title match? Let's also not discount the fact that in The Rock's interviews leading up to the Rumble, I don't <coughs> really remember him actually treating Jericho as an equal in his promos. Or as a serious yeah. He's too busy trying to have Jonathan Coachman sing Barry Manilow's songs. And this is the problem. This is right. why Jericho's not being taken seriously in this match coming up tomorrow night. Is because The Rock doesn't take him seriously. So why should the fans? Exactly. And I know we've gotten a lot of letters from people over the last couple of weeks since we've really kind of been hammering The Rock. <laughs> And saying, well, the catchphrases sell and the rock sells. <coughs> and that's true, the catchphrases do sell. Well, but the rock in part doesn't sell. We'd like to make that well, that, yeah. clear. <laughs> Chris Bryan, I interrupted you again. No, but hey. Um, but the thing is, eventually you've got to get to the point where the rock is productive in all cases. Yes, he pops the crowd. But you know what? Popping a crowd doesn't equal money spent on a pay per view or money spent on a house show ticket or things like that. 
you have to build other stars up because eventually, a year from now, if we're still looking at Austin, Triple H, and The Rock, and that's it, the ratings are going to go back down. Catchphrases or no catchphrases, you know, what or no what. If that's all you've got, eventually people are going to get bored. Here, here's a little logic, and I realize wrestling just doesn't even <coughs> dabble in any means of logic anymore, but I realize we got, like you said, Brian, a lot of letters our points about Ric Flair, the Rock catchphrases, and we thank you viewers. A lot of them are very well written and very long, which we really <laughs> love. No, they're very well, long, they're very well thing. written. We'd like yeah. to read them yeah, on the no, air. They're, they're so damn long, though, but they're good. And the thing is, a lot <coughs> of them were, at live shows, people like to get into the show, chanting what, chanting smell what the Rock is cooking. Right. Are you going to spend $30 to see Steve Austin at the Royal Rumble say the word what? No. What you are going to spend $30 to see are, is good wrestling. Save the live show, or not the live shows, watch Raw if you want to see what. Yeah. But you're going to spend thirty dollars to see what <coughs> well, wrestling is not based around catchphrases, and I realize that's a little bit of logic here, and it might seem really obvious me saying that. But I, I, and Jim even said that uh, <coughs> last week, I believe, about they like to partake, partake, partake. You got it. <laughs> One of those words I said in there. They like to join into the action, but why would you spend thirty-five dollars or God forbid forty at WrestleMania just to see some st Steve Austin say the word what? Or another wrestler. I'm sorry, I'm rambling here, but you no, understand the point. I understand your point, and I think the point can be carried even further when you talk about storylines, and they have to be interesting. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the Jericho Rock storyline leading up to tomorrow night's Royal Rumble, what storyline? That's exactly. my point. There that's hasn't exactly. been any reason why we should think that Jericho's <coughs> going to keep the title. It's obvious that it's the Rock is the big star in this match, and it's everybody's been saying, you know, the Rock's going to win the title. And we have no reason to think otherwise because the way Jericho has been portrayed. Well, you know what? That could be good in a way because. The, the logic, at least, has always kind of been that if the, is, if the fan favorite goes into the pay-per-view looking as if he's going to become the champion or if he's going to prevail, more people tend to buy the show. But that's what's going to happen. So the problem is, is when Jericho loses, Jericho gets knocked down a peg. Rock doesn't need this world title. Jericho does. You've got enough stuff coming up with WrestleMania that you can keep Chris Jericho as your world champion and do a good job selling your pay-per-view and right. have enough stuff to pad that world title match and still make WrestleMania a sellable show. And I know maybe saying padding a world title match is sacrilegious to some people, but it's okay in this case because you need more people. I agree with your point that there's nothing wrong with leading into a pay-per-view with people thinking the face, in this case The Rock, is going to yeah. win the title. But my problem rests with the fact that you don't see any interaction between The Rock and Chris Jericho yeah. leading yeah, up to the right. pay-per-view. I don't care if The Rock beats Jericho down three weeks in a row. That's fine, but at least they're interacting. What we haven't seen leading up to the Royal Rumble are any interaction and whatsoever between The Rock and Jericho for whatever reason, if he's filming movies or Jericho's too busy getting the figure four put on him. Right. There's been nothing between those two that makes me say, well, I want to buy it. I want to see these two wrestle. Yeah, and just to jump back to the catchphrases, <coughs> the, there is room in wrestling for the catchphrase. I'm not saying The Rock should never come out and say, do you smell what The Rock's cooking again or use, you know, the go now. stop doing those things would be it would be suicidal you can't do that but you need to take the catchphrases and make them productive for the rest of your product people will still react to what and people will still react to rock doing all the different things he does but he, they need to start channeling those things toward guys like Chris Jericho like you mentioned Randy there's been no interaction he can still say those things and still put over Chris Jericho as a legitimate opponent that's the point if they knew he was going to be unavailable for Raw. Exactly. For exactly. That's a good point. And I'm reminded of WrestleMania before we get a break here. I think it was right before 15, Austin and The Rock. Rock was doing his goofy thing in Austin. Well, no, The Rock was the heel. Austin was the face. Yeah. I remember at one point, Austin was outside the ring or something. He told The Rock to take his glasses off. He goes, look at me in the eyes and cut a serious promo about their world title match. And since that time, we haven't seen anything out of that, like from The Rock. Just even in a sit-down interview, take his glasses off. Be serious. I'm, I'm winning that title. Be taken a little more seriously. And the key word here is serious. We're going to talk a little bit about that because one of the things we saw this past week on Raw was Triple H come out and talk about the importance of the title, something we haven't seen in a while from the WF main eventers. So we're going to come back and talk more about Rumble and about Raw. So stay tuned. Stay that every 
probably knew, but we said this is going to be the biggest yeah. trouble ever. I'm getting tired. That about Savio Vega. screen.
why it makes them sound a little bit like uh, stuff. It makes them sound a little bit more. We also have a truth in the 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 I hate the truth. Right now, I think it's better to put as much effort right now into the physical division. We're actually doing a two maps. Explain that there's no logic behind We also just ignore that. that <laughs> and we should mention too that we uh, I'm not even gonna say it. Rumor <laughs> has Screen. Nobody's gonna get this. We just made an off-screen prediction that just came true. It's great. Jim DeVries that we've just been informed has been released from police custody. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, sorry. No, I'm, I'm it's just, just been released from police custody. He will be here for a minute. It's the correct prediction for him to break. But yeah, Hal Nash and Hogan are coming. I don't think it's right. Hal Nash and Hogan are coming back. He's just like Saul and Hogan. Is this your boat? <laughs> We're all coming back. Anyway, Apparently well, Vince McMahon was able to think about Jim Hogan and immediately think of the rap and just took him to war. And I don't know why. I mean, you know, I mean, I guess the first thing you think of when there's two guys in the back and they're going to take over the entire fight up with their dreams and they're just like, kind of storyline. No, see, I don't know where you're going. Yeah, you never know. They, got the, they might come in and say, you know what, we'll do whatever you want. I mean, that does sound like a stretch, but, you know, there's nothing that's like that Hogan and Nash kind of just took the top out. I mean, you never know. coming back. Chris Jericho is going to get knocked out 100 times by Randy Orton because he drives Jericho into the ropes. Um, 
how that's probably going to be up in the top of the card. Yes, I think a lot of them are. Are they going to yield a lot of power? I think it depends on what kind of contract you have. I think five years guaranteed money deals is better than just a stupid market for some people. But it's the most people that have to have them. Exactly. But I don't think he's going to let them run rough track because this is what they did to get it together. And I don't think he's going to let that happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You know, no one's having them at the top of the card. Because it's like, oh, I wish I was at his manager. I'm going to like, you know, just kind of like turn that one. Well, you know, this guy can be just at the top of the card. We'll have to figure it out. But you know, maybe move him back down to manager. Some of his points and things will be his manager at home. And there's maybe a way that you can make a can of fresh air. Depending on how good he is. But I'll tell you what. Hey, we're going to hold off. We're going to go back here. But I like the Hogan thing. And I'm not, my rant about that. I'm actually going to stay positive about Hogan. You know, hopefully the world is better. But I still think that the people are far better. But uh, we're going to come back. And we're going to have a special guest this week for Rams. So please. But uh, I'm going to get you off the line. Thanks a lot. We fired the great Jim Caldwell. And there he is. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> well, I, I really don't have a topic this week, so I'm just going to make that one of my favorite questions. So I uh, have a big show tonight. I'm going to ask you about the Eagles. You, I, we talked briefly about the guarantee money deal falling off the place or whatever. I think the big show has proven that when you get a guaranteed contract, he gets that way. And hopefully it's all magical and it's still guaranteed money. Hopefully, I'm sure there's some downside guarantees, but hopefully they're like in the same frame. Like they're just going to turn into a base breaker and you just sign a 10 year, $10 million contract. And you're fat, lazy, and sucks Monday night. That's about it. And and Steve Kozner likes to say, screw your team, Jeff and Brady, but it's fine, but this is really not going to work. Uh, Homer's a 14 and 0. Start working hard. Uh, Steelers will win. Signing of Hulk Hogan, I know, is sort of been the, the fuel of the internet war over the last couple of weeks. Uh, well, actually, the last couple of days. Not the last couple of weeks, the last couple of weeks. But I know a lot of people, especially a lot of the quote unquote smart people, and I know that Jim Hogan probably got the crowd, and he's, he's getting the world famous for saying something like this on Sunday, but you know, that's not happening. That's not, I don't think that's true at all. I think this is a great, great move. I mean, it's precedent. It's a great move. It's the reins of a very short. If this is Yankees for full of Hulk Hogan, it tells them, this is what you do. comes in. The six. Wow, Bruce Willis got shot, and then at the end, you know, we're on the show. It's not the same kind of stuff. I 
You can check it out on the internet. Turned you off already. It is like. 